I'm Sarah Grace from Sarah Grace Cookie Company. I am a cookie decorating twin mama, and I teach you how to go from a cookie rookie to a royal icing decorating pro. So if we haven't met before, I help people learn to decorate custom decorated sugar cookies with royal icing. Um, I do that through my YouTube channel through Facebook Live videos like this, the Facebook group Cookie Confidence, uh, my blog, and my membership SG Cookie Academy. So thank y'all for being here today. We are talking about three ways to keep your hands nice and steady while you're popping because I know when I first started cookie decorating, it was really hard for me to keep my hands steady. I would have those wavy lines because my hands would get shaky or um, I just couldn't stabilize them well. But I've learned a few tips and tricks um, that are going to help you stabilize your hands. And I apologize for my voice today, y'all. It is allergy season in the South. The pollen is out in full force. It's yellow everywhere. So my allergies are acting up, but just bear with me. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you can hear me okay and if you can see everything okay on screen, Sorry, I've got food coloring on my hand. Um, <laughs> if you can hear and see everything okay, go ahead and give me a heart emoji. If you don't care, that'll help me know that you're here and that everything's working properly. So we're going to get started with our first tip. Our first tip is to make sure that you're holding your popping bag correctly. So I have this little practice page here with me and something I want to mention as we're talking about the practice page is practice is going to help you get your hands steadier and it's going to help you become better at making those straight lines. Of course, we know practice is key. Um, these tips are going to help you improve that practice and go further faster, but practice is definitely key. So if you would like to download this popping and flooding practice sheet, it's just got these little lines on it and some squares and circles that you can flood. That way you don't have to make cookies every single time you practice. Because I know at first that can get expensive and tiresome. This is really nice to just pop it into a page protector and then you can wipe it off and start all over the next day or as soon as you get done, just whenever you're ready. You can go to saragracecookieco.com and get this or you can drop a comment down below say I want the practice page and I'll send you a link now as y'all are um, getting that set up if you've got that with me if you're not going to be doing the popping practice page with me tell me where you're from in the comments I'm going to be uh, making sure everyone's logged in it looks like we are live in the group and as I'm doing that I'd love to know where y'all are from where y'all are watching from today there we go. All right. Looks like we're all set up. Okay. So the first tip that I have for you is the grip that you're going to use to hold your popping bag. So I like to tell people in my cookie decorating classes, the way that I hold my popping bag, this is a farm girl thing, but <clears throat> you will take your thumb and your first finger and grip the top of the bag. Then you're going to squeeze down from the top with the rest of your hand like you're milking a cow. Now if you've never milked a cow before, this is how you do it. Now you know. <laughs> and this is going to help you squeeze the popping bag efficiently and effectively so that you can get the icing out and it will help you keep your hands stable. But the thing that's going to help most, or what I found to help most, is to put two fingers under your wrist. So right here, you see on my wrist, like this part, kind of between your hand and your wrist bone. I don't know what that's called. Somebody who knows anatomy, tell me what this is. Um, right here on the base of your wrist, you're going to rest this hand, whatever your non-dominant hand is, on the table. So your work surface is going to have your non-dominant hand resting. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. And you're going to take your dominant hand and rest it on top. So you can see my fingers are kind of up off the table a little bit. They're kind of helping guide my hand as I need to go back and forth. And my hand is resting on my fingers so that it doesn't have to stabilize itself. See, when my hand is just up like this, it's harder to be stable. But when you rest it on your fingers like this, it gives it something to sit on and it gives you more control over your popping bag. 
So you can go back and forth, side to side, and it helps you keep from shaking. Now I've seen people rest their wrist on the table, but that doesn't give me enough backward motion. Personally, I prefer this method because it allows you to have that backward motion. Resting on the table, you kind of have to like go back at an angle and it's sort of awkward. So that's how I prefer to hold my popping bag and how I prefer to pop. So if you have the practice page, <clears throat> Just practice that hold a few times. Practice making lines with that hold. Y'all can't see it right now, but I'm making a line on my popping page. Just practice as much as you can. Get the hang of that hold. Or if there's a different hold that helps you, absolutely, by all means, do it. Um, let me know in the comments, how do you hold your popping bag? I'm interested to know because there's a girl I follow on Instagram. She holds hers like a pencil. It's amazing to me. I don't think I could get anything to come out of the bag if I was doing it like that, just because I've never been able to. But tell me in the comments how you hold your bag. Hey, Patty. Hey, Connie. Hey, Leanna. Hey, Carol. Thank you all for being here today. So our next tip is make sure that you've eaten something. <laughs> I know this sounds silly to make sure that you're getting adequately fed to decorate cookies, but I noticed something when I first started decorating. I'm a mama who barely has time to brush my teeth in the morning, and sometimes I forget to eat breakfast. So I would notice about 12, 1 o'clock as I was decorating cookies when the boys were staying at my mom's or my mother-in-law's, I would notice my hands getting really shaky as I was popping. And I was like, geez, what is wrong? Why am I so shaky all of a sudden? I'm using my proper hold. Um, and it's like, oh yeah, all I've had is six cups of coffee this morning and I've had no actual real food. So make sure you're eating some kind of protein to fill you up and sustain you. And that will help you keep your hands steadier. I don't know if anyone else does that. That may just be a me thing. But if it is, <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, number three, the third way to make sure your hands stay steady as you're decorating is to sit down while you decorate. Um, it may not be the most calorie burning solution, and I know it does get tiresome to sit after a little while, so you may have to get up and take a stretch break every once in a while, but sitting down to decorate really does help when it comes to stabilizing your body keeping your hands stable. When you're standing up, your legs are kind of starting to get fatigued, your feet get tired, and so the rest of your body is starting to get fatigued. If you're just resting and you kind of have this stable seat to work from, I think it really helps stay steady. That's just me. I know some people stand, some people see it. I think it's great for beginners to sit down while they decorate because it allows you to concentrate all your effort and energy on your popping. Like I said, you can get this popping and flooding practice page on saragracecookieco.com. But if you sent me a comment down below, I will make sure and get that to you. <clears throat> Let's see. I want to see some of the places people are watching from today. This is amazing to me. I have been just taken away with all the different locations people are from in the Cookie Confidence Facebook group. I love reading um, different comments from people from different parts of the world because you can see the differences in spelling. <laughs> I know that's silly, but okay, we've got Carol is from Eureka, California. Oh, wow, that's cool. Liana is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Patty Brown, Savannah, Tennessee. You're close to me. Connie, Phoenix, Arizona. Cynthia, Eufaula, Alabama, also close to me. Wow. Oh, and Summer is from Pakistan. Cool. That's so awesome. Okay, Leona said, I think I was fist holding, but I'm glad to see a better way to hold it. Well, I'm glad that helped you, Leona. And I know exactly what you're talking about. When you first start decorating, if you've never seen the proper way to hold the bag or you've never really had any luck with it, it's tempting and easy to just grab it in the middle and squeeze. One of the problems that happens when we do that is if you're not tied well at the top, it's going to come out the top. 
it's also really hard to maintain that stability because you don't have as wide of a grip. There's not as much in your hand. But when you're grabbing from the top down, you have a little bit of a wider something to grip. That was always something, that's something I learned as a teacher when I was learning about early childhood education. It's um, easier for kids to get the hang of things when they're, when they've got something larger to grip. That's why you see like the baby crayons that are really big circles for babies to color with. I don't know if that's any relation to cookie decorating, but whatever helps, right? <laughs> Well, thank y'all so much for being with me here today. Um, we have a Q&A session coming up in March. Actually, it's next week. It's Tuesday, March the 30th. We have a couple different sessions you can attend. There's one in the morning at 10, and then there's one in the evening at 6. So if you'd like to attend that, it's totally free. You can go to saragracecookieco.com. Up at the top, there's a little spot that says Q&A, or it's right there on the front page where you can see it. And just click sign up and pick your preferred time. I'll send you a Zoom link so that you can attend the Zoom meeting. You don't have to have your camera on. You don't have to be fancy or even um, have your microphone turned on. If you'd like to, you're welcome to. But it's nothing that you have to dress up for, nothing that you can't like multitask while you watch. We're just going to ask some questions, answer some questions. If you don't have a question, that's fine. You can come hang out with us, drink some coffee and have a snack. And you can learn from the questions from other people. I know when I started, I just had so many questions. I didn't know which one to ask first. It was just this conglomeration of confusion and discombobulation going on in my head. So. If you don't have a specific question or you have too many, don't worry. Just come and listen to the others and you'll get your email with the Zoom link and then you'll get an email saying reply with any questions you'd like me to answer in the Zoom. So that's where you'll reply and submit your questions. All right. Well, thank you all again and I hope you all have a great day. Bye bye.